Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at the regression analysis for estimating cost. In the prior session, we looked at the high-low method. We're done with this. We also looked at the count analysis and engineering estimate. Before we start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. So why not share the wealth? Also, check out my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for your, for your course, this course, as well as your other accounting and finance courses, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. So let's go ahead and get started. In the prior session, we looked at the high-low method. And if you if you don't remember what the high-low method, we basically end up with the formula for the straight line. And we said y equal to a plus bx. a is the fixed cost, bx is the variable cost, and y is the total cost. And we use this method based on the two data points to define this line, the highest point and the lowest point. And that's why it's called the high-low method. Well, guess what? This is not a good measure. So when we get the formula, when we get the um, the straight line formula, y equal uh, a plus bx, and I showed you, I, I I placed I placed a random number from the from the data that we have, and I show you it does not measure properly all the data. It works perfectly for the highest point and the lowest point. So what's the solution? The solution is to go, to go through a regression analysis where we analyze all the data points, all the data points to estimate this line. So rather than just two data points, the regression will go through all of them. And now it's easy to run a regression. You can do so in Excel sheet. So if you have an Excel sheet, you can do so. In the description below, you will find my uh, my instruction on how to run a, a, a data analysis and regression. And it shows us, the regression model shows us how fit, how good is the model. So in this session, I am not going to run the analysis. If you want to know how to run a data uh, regression analysis, please look in the description. In this session, I'm going to use the prior data that we used for JK renovation. And we're assuming that the direct labor cost affect our overhead cost. So simply put, what we are saying, the, the, labor, the labor hour, the labor hour is X. The overhead cost is Y. So X predict Y. The more labor hour or the less labor hour will predict will predict overhead cost. Now we ran the analysis and this is the output. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to I'm going to read the output for you. Read the output because if you want to learn how to run the analysis, once again, click on the link in the description. So we're going to be looking at few important numbers that you need to be aware of starting with multiple r which is 0.8561 what does it say multiple r is the correlation coefficient what does it tell us it tells us if there is a relationship between the dependent and the independent variable and this number is would, would range between one and negative one so notice here the number is point almost 85 percent point eight five what does what does what does negative one or one state that what does it negative one or positive one say to us as the multiple r approaches one or negative one this means the model is a good predictor it means whatever you are measuring here we are measuring the direct labor hour has effect on overhead cost if this number is closer to one or negative one it means it's a good predictor as this number approaches zero there's means there's no relationship between the two the two factors that you are trying to study here the factor is pretty high 0.85 approximately 86 percent the two variable are related which is overhead cost and labor hours so that's that's the first one the second one we're going to look at is r square r square is the coefficient of determination show how well x explain y so how well labor cost labor hour explain the overhead cost so what's the proportion of the variability in y explaining by knowing something about x so it tells us once we know x how much how much of x explain the variability in y and here what we have is the number is 73.30 okay so as it, as this number approaches one Okay, it could go from zero to one. As it approaches one, it means there's a strong relationship or there's a strong explanation uh, uh, of X explaining Y. 
okay as r approaches zero as it goes down to zero there's less explanatory there's, there's it means the independent variable does not affect the dependent variable okay predictor variable are not related if it approaches zero it means just there's no relationship you know x does not in any way influence y if it's ex exactly zero here we say that labor hours explain 73.3 percent of overhead cost this is what the 73 means um, standard error which is uh, 4963 it shows us how tightly the actual data points fit and uh, it's if or how close they are to the line so basically you remember we have the line and how close the numbers are they to the line okay the smaller the better but again um it's not as important as multiple r and r square then we have the observation is 15 it means how many data points we used to run this analysis we used 15 month worth of data what other important uh, numbers we need to be aware of from this analysis is the coefficient intercept this number right here this number tells us this is basically the fixed cost so basically based on our formula the fixed cost is 20378 it's where the line crosses the the y axis remember have the x axis and the y axis so where the line crosses the y axis is 20000 378 it means at an activity level of zero we still have a fixed cost so they tell us what the fixed cost is 20378 the labor labor hour coefficient which is 34 point this is another important number 34.63 or 64 rounding this tells us the variable cost now we have the fixed cost and now we also have the variable cost those are very important figures why because those two figures that are going to help us set up the formula line which is total cost equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost times the independent variable so basically the overhead cost equal to the fixed cost 20378 plus the variable cost 34 dollars and 65 cent or 64 cent you know i rounded it a little bit higher times the labor hour so this is our line this is the equation this is the equation of our line this is the equation of the line and this equation of the line went through all the data points and that's why it's better than the high low method because under the high low method we only go through how many points just two points here we're going through the whole data so let's assume b equal to zero what does it mean b equal to zero it means this number here equal to zero if b equal to zero it means we have no variable cost that means all the cost is fixed all the cost is fixed because if you have no variable cost and you know multiply x by zero it's going to still going to give you zero it means we all we all have a fixed cost let's take a look at the t stat that's also an important number t stat here the t stat the t stat is the slope of the line to determine if the slope of the line is significant and how do we compute the t-stat? We'll take the coefficient, divide the coefficient by the standard error. We'll, we'll divide those two numbers together. We'll get 4.59. Is this good enough? If it's a greater than 2, we say that, that this observation is significant. And mo notice of them, the labor hour coefficient and the intercept coefficient, they're both significant because they're both greater than, greater than 2. Also, we can look at the p-value. The p-value tells us the relationship between x and y, whether it happened co 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 it's a coincident or if it's not coincident. Well, the the uh, uh, the the factor that this relationship is coincident is 0 0.0005044, which is a low number. It means there's a low chance that this relationship is by coincident. There's a low chance. It could be, but the, the, the relationship is very small. So you want the p-value to be like all zeros. Like you want the more zeros you have for the p-value, the better off you are. Notice it says e negative 5. This is low. So the relationship, it seems it is significant based on the t-stat. Because I'm sorry, based on the p-value as well as the t-stat. They can basically tell us the same tell us the same thing. We want this number to be small because this tells us it's not by coincident. The relationship is not by coincident. Uh, co confidence interval, this one here, um, lower, lower than 95%. 
Um, it's just to you know how it's computed. You're taking the coefficient minus the standard error will give us the lower bound. Coefficient plus the standard the standard error gives us the upper upper bound. So it's it is this number uh, minus this number and this number plus this number, the higher and the lower. Uh, what does it mean when we have a, a, a when we have a lower lower confidence of 95 and upper confidence of 95? Simply put, we are 95% confident that the fixed and variable costs are within the relevant range. It means whatever we computed here, which is what we're looking for, fixed costs and variable costs, we are 95% sure that those numbers are correct. They, they, they are within the relevant range, the fixed costs as well as the variable cost. What does that mean? It means we are taking a 5% chance that we could be wrong. But 95% is a good, it's a good a confidence interval. Now you could increase this 95 to 99 or you could reduce it to 90 percent but 95 is the standard in the industry. So it's a pretty good it, we, we, practically we can say we are 95 percent sure that the fixed cost and the variable cost are what the output says. That's basically what we are saying. Now all that the prediction of overhead is r square equal to 70 73.3 that's a good that's a high r square sometime management they may wish to see whether a better estimate can be obtained by using additional predict predictor variable so here what we did is we used only one variable let me go back to the data and basically what we did is we used give me one second let me go back we we only we only used labor hours we only use labor hours remember this is the x to predict y to predict y so what what can we do well guess what let's run another analysis where we also include material cost in the equation and this is, becomes a multiple regression we don't have only one uh, independent variable we have x1 and x2 we have two variable the second variable is material cost so it's so it's the more variable you have the better off you are because you're going to try to explain what is changing your your dependent variable okay assume jk renovation has determined that material cost as well as labor cost so now we're, we're going to be adding the material cost as well not labor cost labor hour can affect overhead well the results of using both labor hour x1 as a factor and material cost as predictor were were obtained using the spreadsheet based on the regression and basically this is this is what the formula would look like now overhead cost equal to in, to some intercept plus the first variable times the variable cost, the, the independent variable, labor hour, plus the second variable times the material cost. So this is the formula, and we find out what, once, we're, once we're in the regression that the variable cost is $3.32 for, for the material cost, and 17.84 for the labor hours. And once we do this regression, notice the correlation coefficient is now 0.951 which is higher than what was it earlier higher than point, point 0.85 and r square which is this is an important one used to be 73 percent now what we can say we can say that labor labor hours and direct and material cost explain 90 percent of the overhead cost is this a better explanation? Sure it does. There's still some 10% of overhead cost. It's not explained by those two variables. And don't worry about the adjusted R. It's something similar to the R, but it's a statistical number. Okay. The correlation coefficient for this equation is 0 0.95. And the adjusted, again, R squared, don't worry about the R squared. It's, this is an improvement over the result obtained when the regression included only labor hours, which is included only one single predictor now we have two predictors which is called a multiple regression now what are some problems with using regression to to come up with your cost your estimated cost one thing you could be using an appropriate data and from this and even if you're not using an appropriate data if even if you are using appropriate data the data is good but you draw bogus relationship between two factors for example you would use direct labor to predict material cost when no relationship exists so when you're using the regression you have to make sure what you are doing makes sense in the first place if it makes sense that's good another issue with regression is you could have missing data data that it's not part of the uh, part of the analysis but it should be you could have uh, you can have a problem failing to emit outlier and what's an outlier basically if we uh, this is the true regression line right here 
of a sample data. What happened is, this is the true regression line. The computed regression line is this one. Let me put the computed regression line in a different color. This is the computed regression line. Now, what's the issue between the true regression line and the computed? In the computed line, there was an outlier. At some point, we used a lot of machine hours. A lot of machine hours. Uh, and it's and, and, and we don't know if this point, if this point is an outlier in a sense that uh, we mistyped it. Uh, maybe during that month, um, we had a breakdown and we had to redo everything. That's why we used more machine hours. We don't know. But the point is, once you notice there's an outlier, you want to decide, do you want to eliminate this outlier? Because it's an, an unusual event. It may not appear in the future. Therefore, remove the outlier and you will have the true regression line because you want to know what's the true regression line because you're using this f to estimate your cost in the future so you want to eliminate this outlier then run your analysis but before you eliminate and in the real world you have to explain why you eliminated this outlier there must be a good reason why you eliminated the outlier because the outlier it's it's a key, it's skewed your number so for example here a uh, fixed cost around 50000 with the outlier, fixed cost goes up to around 63,000 or 65,000. So it makes a difference. If you're going to eliminate this outlier, you better have a good reason why. Also, it could be inflation if you're using dollar amount. And there's the economy going through an inflation, so you have to adjust the numbers to inflation. Uh, you could have mismatched period using data from one period to, to match it with another data from another period, which is it does not make it will not make any any sense. As always, I'm going to remind you to like this recording if you like it, share it with other students, and don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for this course, as well as your other accounting, finance, and CPA preparation. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.